Frankenstein, Asian of Shade, number 12, written by Matt Kent, art by Alberto Ponticelli. Last issue, we left off with Frankenstein discovering that all these Shade agents have been retired onto Leviathan, and then he's going to go kill the Leviathan in order to get to a thing called Satan's Ring, which is a mole ring, I guess. So this entire issue is told in the past tense by Agent Bellroy recounting it to Father Time. I'm just going to say it in present tense because that's easier. But regardless, just know this is all told in past tense of Father Time getting a very poor report. So Frankenstein went into the belly of the Leviathan and he just started cutting away. And the entire time he's still having these flashbacks of his own body and like how he was made, like what he did before he died and then was brought back by Victor Frankenstein. So the Leviathan, as he's chopping away, is like, oh, I'm going to die. I need to make my way to the Leviathan graveyard. So it makes its way over there. Agent Calise makes it onto the Leviathan uh, before all this happens, heals up Nina, and they go looking for Frankenstein. But as they do so, they come across him, and he has an army of all of these prior shade agents. They're helping him fight off all of, like, the peacekeeping bugs or whatever. The, I forget what they call the scarebs. That's it. Um, and he's just like, yeah, no, we're going to war. So the Leviathan finally makes it to the graveyard. It ends up dying in there. It crashes down, and this whole place is basically a big bubble that just, it's, I don't know, it's a membrane that keeps air in. It's just like a jungle, but it's under the ocean. So... The Leviathan crashes down in there. Everyone makes their way out. And nobody is able to leave because they're at the bottom of an ocean. But they are still, you know, they're free from the Leviathan. So anyway, um, Shade does have a headquarters down there. Frankenstein makes his way to the central headquarters. Kalise and Nina come up afterwards. And when Frankenstein gets there, he meets against Crowley again. The person that he thought was the mole from before. And Crowley tries to encant a spell to set Frankenstein on fire. And he's like, were you just trying to set me on fire? And Crowley's like, no. And then ends up uh, yelling at Crowley. And Crowley's like, okay, I'm on your side. Sorry, didn't mean to. So they explain that Satan's ring is down on the lower level. And he starts making his way down an elevator. Fights through some more scarabs. Bashes his way through a little bit more. And... He comes across a man down at the bottom who we saw last issue named Agent Mycroft, who is the keeper of Leviathans and the graveyard. And he was actually the one who called on the scarabs. Like, he was trying to kill Frankenstein because Satan's Ring is not a mole organization. It's a device that allows you to see the future. It was previously called, apparently, the Future O-Ring, but it was renamed Satan's Ring because why not? So, Agent Mycroft saw the future of Frankenstein trying to kill him and actually succeeding. So, therefore, he then set a plan in motion to kill Frankenstein, not knowing that it was this very plan being set in motion that would lead Frankenstein right here to kill him. So, at this point, we see the screens have changed and Nina is now dead, uh, with her helmet, her water helmet broken, and she's like, oh no, what what, what could possibly lead to this? But Frankenstein is simply so angry over the prospect of this happening that the spell starts to, like, do something, and it backfires catastrophically, destroying the top part of this building and shattering Nina's helmet. The, again, self-fulfilling prophecy. So... After Frankenstein sees this happen, he snaps the neck of Agent Bellroy. Kalise cares for Nina, makes sure that she doesn't die. And this spell that's starting to overload and whatnot, apparently what it does is that it has an intense healing property for dead matter. So it's getting all of these leviathans in this graveyard and bringing them back to life. So now Frankenstein has to fight against a giant skeletal leviathan. Of course he does so, and he does it very quickly over the course of a few pages. Apparently, just him being in the system is enough to cause an allergic reaction that literally just sets the entire leviathan on fire. And so uh, Frankenstein also is met with very deep burns, but the Leviathan is taken down. So at that point, the narration tells us he had deep 
deep scarring, deep burns. He was actually like unable to be healed by Kelis because there wasn't enough tissue to work with anymore. Um, but he does end up coming to, and he sees Nina's alive. She's without her helmet. Kelis did something to make it so she didn't need to breathe underwater anymore. And then it's explained that all of those shade agents that Frankenstein helped to free from the Leviathan, they all each gave up a tiny bit of their own tissue in order to save Levi or save Frankenstein's life. So he's now made up of these thousands of people who are completely loyal to him. And now that they're completely loyal to him, Frankenstein has an army behind him that are willing to do whatever he says. And as it turns out, the entire thing that Frankenstein's pissed off about, and I don't know how he found this out, is that his creator, Victor Frankenstein, is back and he's brought the rot with him. You heard me right. The rot. If you haven't been paying attention, Animal Man and Swamp Thing have an event of Rot World going on, and Frankenstein issues 13 through 15 are tie-ins. So we've got a zero issue to deal with before that, but then we are going to get into Rot World in Frankenstein. So what do I think of it? I think it is very well written. I think it's a decently well-told story here. It manages to flow from uh, what we were previously doing in terms of uh, Bride of Frankenstein, leaving the team and then just flowing naturally into this thing where he doesn't trust shade anymore and he's got his own army built up and his creators come back it's very well done the whole way through i really do enjoy it um i'm very much looking forward to the rot stuff so for this particular issue i'd say art wise it's actually really good alberto ponticelli does a fantastic job of keeping the detail while also getting these huge moments like feeling awesome like the the skeleton of the leviathan coming back together fantastic looking so i'm going to go ahead and give this one a 7.5 i really do enjoy this arc i think i'm going to enjoy the rot world stuff even more we'll see how it goes there is a chance to fall flat but considering that the writer on swamp thing is jeff lemire and i'm not sure if jeff lemire is taking over for the rot world section but it will at least be interesting to see it's going to be a hell of a ride.